The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 16 KJV that know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that ye which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. When you go about sleeping with people around, you are joining yourself with them. You are making a covenant with them ignorantly. Until you break these covenants, some things will be hard for you in this life. That is the truth. This is why it is so important to stay faithful in your marriages. Husbands and wives, be faithful to one another. Don't invite other people into your marriages. If you are a single person, don't just be joining yourself and becoming one flesh with everyone. Paul quoted from Genesis 2.24, which reveals God's design for both sex and marriage, a man and a woman becoming united, physically and spiritually, as one flesh or one body. A man was testifying about how God delivered him, and he spoke of how he fornicated with a woman, and literally for the next week he was struggling with the spirit of depression. The whole week. Prior to that, he had never struggled with the spirit of heaviness, but that whole week it felt like a dark cloud was over this man. After a week, he felt a lot better, and then fast forward again he slipped up and slept with his same woman, and the dark cloud came again. He didn't feel like leaving his room or bed. He was missing work, and that wasn't even like him. He was a go-getter, but he was sleeping with a woman that he had no intention of marrying. He only found her physically attractive, but it almost cost him his job. This spirit of heaviness only ever came when he was engaged with this woman. The next time you are tempted, think to yourself, would I want to be joined in one flesh and spirit with this person? The Bible says people perish because they lack knowledge. It is the lack of knowledge that is making many enter into covenants with people unconsciously. I want us to think deeply today. How have you entered into a satanic covenant with anyone? How have you allowed ignorance to take advantage of you and push you into an evil covenant? This is a time for you to think because you need to break all these covenants. Until you break them, some things will never be right in your life. I want you to think deeply because you must break them today. The power of God is ever ready to break these covenants for you. You need to submit yourself to Jesus. You need to enter into a fresh covenant with Jesus. If you don't know, the covenant you make with Jesus will destroy every evil and satanic covenants you have entered into consciously or unconsciously. The power of Christ is available if you will accept him. Hebrews 9, 11-12 KJV says, But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with his hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his blood, he entered into once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. The old of Christ is here to redeem you from every evil covenant you have entered into. All you need to do is submit yourself to him, and you will be set free. Entering Evil Covenants, Blood Covenant Firstly, going into an evil blood covenant or going into a kind of covenant that God is against is satanic. It is something you must avoid at all costs. It is something that must not be a part of you in any way. If you are called into the light of Christ, you are called into the covenant of God through Christ. You must never go into any other evil covenant with anyone or any group. Under no circumstances should you be part of an evil covenant. Covenants is a subject that is rarely preached about in churches today. When is the last time you heard about covenants? So what is the covenants? In the ancient world, it was similar to what we in the modern world call a contract, treaty, or will. Each covenant established the basis of a relationship, conditions for that relationship, promises and conditions of the relationship, and consequences if those conditions were unmet. The most common examples of a covenant for us is marriage. So we all know covenants are not negative. There are so holy covenants, and there are evil ones. There are many ways people make a covenant, and there are many ways they enter into a covenant with. Many people enter into a covenant with the opposite sex to establish a trust, or to seal a promise that they will never leave each other. 
Many other people enter into an evil covenant with some occult groups. Some people enter into covenants with demons, idols, familiar spirits, and Satan himself. Many things can be used to seal this covenant. A covenant will be ineffective if there is nothing that is used to seal it. It is a promise. It is a deal that requires a seal. We have seen many people use some objects as a seal. In some places, they use padlocks. Some use stickers. They tie things together to show that they are bound by the covenant. The most effective way of making a covenant is by using blood as a seal. Even the Bible established this fact that a covenant cannot be without blood. Hebrews 9.18 NIV This is why the first covenant was not put into effect without blood. There's always a need to make blood available for a covenant to be strong, and the devil also requires blood to make these covenants strong. God used this method. He sent his son Jesus to shed his blood to establish a covenant. The reason why blood is always effective is that it has life in it. Blood has life and it can speak. When blood is shed, it speaks. We can see this in Genesis 4.10 KJV. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. The Bible says that the blood of Abel has a voice. It cried out. It spoke to the Lord. That is why blood is always effective in making covenants. In another verse of the Bible, we can see where the Bible made us understand that blood can speak again. Hebrews 12, 24 KJV And to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Since blood speaks, and it can testify, it is good for making a covenant. People have made a mistake of making evil covenants. They have gone into a covenant that will affect their lives forever. One thing that we need to know is that entering into an evil blood covenant will always make it possible for demons to haunt you when you go against the covenant. What you should know again is that the fact that the one who made the covenant died doesn't mean the covenant is over. It will pass into the next generation and continue until someone breaks the covenant. We don't know the kind of covenant that our fathers have gone into, but what I want us to know is that God will deliver us from every evil covenant that wants to be haunting us. The reason why people go into these evil covenants is that they are ignorant. They don't know the repercussions or the result of these evil blood covenants. God says in Hosea 4.6 KJV, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. People lack knowledge. They are ignorant of these things. They are ignorant of the evil that is associated with the evil covenant they are entering into. We have seen many Christian youths going into blood covenants and making promises that they will be together forever. There are so many high school students who are practicing these things. We must not be looking at them do this and feel like they are just kids. We need to let them understand the effect of what they are doing. If you do not understand how this is associated with demons, we will look at it now. We can agree that anything that God is not a part of is automatically for the devil. There is never a neutral ground. It doesn't exist. There is nothing like you don't belong to God and you don't belong to the devil. If you reject God, you have automatically accepted the devil. When you go into a blood covenant with anyone or any occult groups, God is not a part of it. It is not a blood covenant established through Christ, and then God has nothing to do with that. What will happen is that demons will accept the blood and use it to keep the record of the covenant. They will be there forever until that covenant is broken. I am saying it this way for us to understand clearly why going into an evil covenant can destroy a life. Any blood covenant you have entered into will be destroyed in Jesus' name. You may have gone into this out of ignorance. There is no point in using blood as a seal to promise to someone that you will not leave them. That is not a promise anymore. It is like forcing yourself to stay with that person. No promise needs blood like that. Another reason why people enter into evil blood covenants is that they want power, they want fame, they want wealth. People would do anything for money. There have been stories of Christians who joined occult groups and they got wealth. Many people like that couldn't wait for God to perfect them. 
they went to make evil covenants. If you are thinking that Christians cannot do such things, the truth is that many Christians are leaving the church and going into these covenants. Some people don't believe in this. Of course, the devil would love it that people are blind to this so that they will not be able to fight these covenants. We must fight. You must ask God to open your eyes to see every evil covenant that has been made that is affecting you. If you have entered into any blood covenant before or any other forms of covenants, they are evil covenants and you need to break them. If you do not break these covenants before it is too late, they will destroy you. This is not about evil spirits. This is not about other spirits that torment people. We are talking about something that you need to break. We are talking about the promises that you need to destroy. Some people will remain stagnant in life until the covenant between them and someone is broken. Some people are tied with people that have passed. If this covenant is not broken, they will not move forward. You might be saying that you are not in the covenant with anyone. The truth is that many people have unconsciously entered into covenants with other people. Do you know that sex is a form of a covenant? Many people do not know this, and they have entered into many of these through fornication, 